Oh! Oh gosh! What is going? Oh, it's on the other side of that rock. What is going on with Josh? On the other side of that rock. Oh god! No! Did you? Did you see the size of that fish? Yeah. Oh my! There we go. Let's go park this sucker. Well, how's it going everybody? And welcome to another episode of Sweet Home Alabama Tour. My name is Tyler Anderson. I own this channel called Tyler's Real Fishing that you're watching right now. And of course I am actually for this tour uh, back in Alabama. I was in Tennessee for a day, but I'm back here in the good old state of Alabama with a guy that, man, he messaged me on Instagram years ago and I guess I never responded. And then he messaged me something else. And I looked back and he had invited me to fish on the Coosa River, the mighty Coosa. And uh, we're kind of going to spend two days together, my last two days here in Alabama with Josh. What's up? He's a kind of new good buddy of mine, so he's got a sick jet boat. We're going to get out there and we're going to smash some, some Coosa River spotted bass. It is one of those areas that I've always wanted to fish as an angler. I just saw the bass masters going there and both wrecking their boats and catching giant, giant spots. Oh, oh we're good. I keep forgetting you don't have a prop. So your prop's going to hit the boat. But we'll tell you guys more about the jet, the jet boat later on. It's a pretty cool system, but I say we catch some fish. You ready? Yeah. Let's get it going. Let's go get them. Let's get it going. Let's, I said, let's get it doing. Let's get it doing. Let's get it going. <laughs> so we're just going to kind of run up the lake here. As I mentioned, we have a jet boat, which has no prop. It sucks water in, spits water out. Easy peasy. It allows you to get into areas that a prop just cannot. Nope. Little guy. Dinker. Oh no! Gosh dang it! I thought I lost him for a second, and then and then you said real, real, real. Ah crap! Nah, felt like a bite. Could be wrong. Dude, one was chasing a big gizzard shad right there. For real? Yeah, like a four-inch gizzard shad, five-inch. Literally right there. Gosh, dang it. I had a bite. I told you. Oh, felt like a little, hat off that rock. felt like a little guy. So I've been missing a few fish on the, uh, the underspin that I had there. So I'm going to put on what they call a scrounger head. If you've never thrown a scrounger, I would implore you to go try it out. It's basically like a, a chatterbait mixed with, I don't even know, more like a, a fluke style or it's a very interesting type bait because it's very simple. It's just a hook a small portion of weight and then a soft plastic uh, rubbery type bill that kind of makes it do a crankbait action. And it definitely catches fish in kind of finicky situations. I've thrown this on Lake Travis a ton and caught good fish. Oh, you had a bite? Yeah. Oh, he had a bite on the scrounger that I just tied on. Gosh. Oh. I think you're jerking. I think you do what I used to do. You set the hook like a crankbait. What am I supposed to do? I mean, that, that, that fish attacked it with the force of Thanos, man. Oh. I got, got a boy. Got, got him. Boy. Got him. Is that a good one? I don't know. Nope. Nope. But he's coming to the boat. Yes! Oh, no! There he goes. Coming in my face. How bad? That is a Coosa River spotted bass. Finally. <laughs> That's what you come to Alabama for. The Coosa River well, that spot. That's not what you come to Alabama okay, for. Okay, but I come <laughs> I come to catch this fish. Yeah. Whether or not it's big, I got it. Just like little little Guadalupe very, bass. Very red eyes uh -huh. on this portion on the river. He's dark. He's been in the sun. Oh, is that what they get when they're in the sun? Yeah. Little guy. All right, we're gonna see you later, bud. Bloop. There we go. Send him off like a dolphin. Uh -huh. Tell the folks what we're doing uh, right now. Right now we are doing our hardest and trying not to hit a rock. <laughs> we are exploring in a jet boat and um, trying not to uh, break it because you have to be, even though you have a jet boat and you can go about three inches of water, yeah. you have to be uh, careful because you can put a hole in your boat. And I am too broke to afford to fix <laughs> a hole. Do it for YouTube. Going up is always easier because you're able to see all the uh, 
current it coming in is pushing over the rocks yeah going down is a lot harder because it's harder to see and you lose control you can't go slow you can go up this stuff slow and learn it but when you're coming down if you're idling and that current catches you you could go down it sideways and that's when things can get like dangerous yeah and so you have to it, you, you gotta just kind of sometimes you just gotta <laughs> send it and go yeah <laughs> Outside. Oh. We are back to fishing. Let's catch us one of the Alabama studs that we came here for. My gosh, I just lost a four pounder. No, you didn't. He ate it at the boat and I, I let it load up and he pulled this way and got off. Are you serious? Dude, that thing was big. <laughs> ah, come on. He ate it about two feet from the trolling motor. And so I kind of like, I think I gave him a little bit and then set the hook, but he ate it and turned around. I couldn't do anything about that. Uh, Dude, that thing was a stud. Their mouths are just so small. I only had them on for a quick second. So mo most likely bit the tail. I'm sort of doing like figure eights by the boat. I'm a spot of bass, love the figure eight. Got him. Oh, help. He's on the other side of the rock. Oh no, he, you got him, you got a big one? No, he's not a big one, but he thought he was. Ah, but it's another fish nonetheless. Let me see him. Look at that red eye. Oh, beauty. Little guy in the slack water on the jig. We may have found a good new area, boys and girls. I hate to plug it, not sponsor, but the Minn Kota Ultrex has the spot lock feature and I'm not even touching the trolling motor. And we are staying in this strong, strong current. Most of the time it has some it has some hiccups here and then, but it makes fishing a breeze. If you have if you have three thousand dollars to drop, just for those of y'all watching who have three thousand extra dollars laying around, get you an old tracks. Oh, oh, Josh has another one. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Oh, dude, the finesse might be the money today. Oh, dude, this is a this is a very good one. Yep, yep, yep. Oh my gosh. Oh gosh. Holy cow. That's what I'm talking about. Here, here, get him in. Yes! Look at that thing. Hold on, hold on. Let me get him. He's going to flop out of that. Woo! And Look at that spotted bass. That's what you come to Alabama for. She's coming off close spawn. Uh huh. Look how dark she is. What's, What's your say? guess? Three and a half? What? Three and a half? Three, four. Three point four. Pretty dang close. We're going to go in for the release of this beautiful spotted bass of the Coosa River. A large car. That. Woo! Well done, my friend. Well done. Oh, all right, let's get some more of those. Gotta get some more of those. So after those few jig bites, we have made our way all the way up here to the Lake Jordan Dam. Now, this area may look slightly familiar to you if you've ever watched the Bassmaster Elite series. What was it called here? You remember like the specific name of it? The tournament? Yeah, it was Alabama the Charge. Alabama River Charge. You can, I'll leave the link down in the description. But right now, I'm gonna rip Bassmaster's footage. I'll give him credit, it's all Bassmasters but uh, kind of of a guy both catching a big fish up here but also destroying his boat up there on the rocks. Watch as he tries to move his way through those extreme conditions, popping his way through those rapids. This area generally saved for kayaks. Jared Miller, not in a kayak. And as you can see, oh, that is painful, painful footage. Is actually stuck on the bottom of the Alabama River right now because he is still not out of, oh, oh, that's gonna leave a mark. Oh, you better have a gnarly set of tools to buff that out, my friend. So that is the rocks right there that were mostly underwater, right next to the dam, when those guys were catching fish. So we just ran up here real quick. Josh has actually never been up here in his boat before from the, the ramp down there. He's launched at this ramp up near the dam, but he's never been up here. We were able to kind of discover some new areas, but we have a few hours left before we're gonna head to dinner. And so we're gonna try to catch a few more nice size spotted bass. Hopefully get me my PB today and then break it tomorrow. Let's get back to fishing. See? Oh, rock bass. <laughs> I got me a rock bass. Oh, oh man. Biggin. What are you thinking? What do you got? That's a big one, dude. Dude, that is that is big. Holy crap. Huh? That's a very pretty fish. I can't open this net. There it goes. It's not that big. Is it not? It's not that big. That's so long. Holy crap. Dude, that's a long fish. 
Wow. Wow. Oh, come on. Bring him in here, man. Bring oh, him in. Oh, that is actually a lot bigger than I thought it was. Oh, yes. Oh, that is a lot bigger. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Dude. Dude, I told you. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Look at that thing. Man, that... I wish we could have been able to keep that one in the live well. Oh, it would have been such a good picture. Yeah. Well, the live well's broken, but y'all, that, right, that is a work. good one. That is oh. what you come to the Coosa River for right uh -huh. there. Look at, how that, look at that gold pretty pattern on him. Gosh, that's pretty. Oh, yeah. Let me get the big camera. What you think about that one? Woo, that's a beautiful, mm. beautiful fish. Look at that big. We're going to get away on that girl real quick. Get the pictures and get her back in the water. So Josh is wrecking me on the on the jig. Although that was his first cast probably in the, in the good stuff. Three, nine. Three, nine. Looks, looks like, a lot bigger than the yeah, other I think one. It's though. long and skinny, dude. Yeah. That is a long fish. Yeah. If it was pre-spawn, she'd be a lot fatter. Obviously. Yeah. That's cool. That's a Coosa River spot on a finesse jig. Uh, That's what we're looking for. Dope. Oh. Ooh. All right, big girl. Give me some of that, man. Uh, Give me some of that. We'll take that. It's my that? turn. I know. Oh, oh gosh, what is going? Oh, it's on the other side of that rock. What is going on with Josh? On the other side of that rock. Oh God! No! Did you? Did you see the size of that fish? Yeah. Oh my! <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know why I'm laughing. Oh, oh I don't know why I'm laughing. Oh Come on. My Gosh, you broke me off of that freaking rock. <laughs> Come on, little boy. Get up. Did you get that on camera? Well, I didn't get, I got you, I got you breaking off. I didn't get the fish on camera. Out. Yeah, I got you freaking out. <laughs> hey, <laughs> sorry. Oh, gosh. Get him, get him. Oh, got him. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's a, that's a gosh, gosh. Dude. Bring him in, dude, he's mad. He's mad. Where is my jank net? Where is your jank net? Oh! He's dark. It's very dark. You tell him what are fine on the rocks? Yeah, we're okay. I'm not worried about it. I'm worried about you getting this fish in finally. Dude, they're finally up here. I figured something out. Yes! Woo! That is definitely your PB spot. <laughs> That's a new PB spot, baby. Oh. Just over two pounds. My previous PB was probably just under two pounds. I didn't have an official one, but we're gonna call this one my official. My official PB. Photography class for a week. Beautiful. Huh, this fish was spawning. Look at that, he's got red Where's your camera? red marks on his tail. It's in my uh, my car back here. I need to zoom out some. There we go. Should I zoom two out? pounds, two ounces. <laughs> That's my PB spot. We're gonna catch a bigger one before this day and hopefully yes. this weekend is over. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> Woo! Oh, it feels good. Okay. Well, now it's probably a good time, boys and girls, to talk about kind of what we're doing. So we're fishing finesse jigs in these eddies. Everything that we're fishing with today will be linked down below for you guys to purchase as well. From the finesse jig to the line to the rod and reel combos. I know I'm throwing a 7.3 medium heavy. What are you throwing? I'm throwing a 7.5 heavy. 7.5 heavy. Okay. That probably helps with your hook sets. <laughs> So all this stuff will be linked down below and probably in the comment section. And if you guys have any questions about kind of how we're catching them, make sure you guys leave them down there in the comments. I will, uh, I'll be having a little recap with him at the end of the day, hopefully with a few more fish on camera, kind of discussing how we caught them. But just thought I'd take a moment and show y'all, because that's what this channel is all about, teaching you how we're catching these fish. I just love fishing in current. It is fun. Well, everybody, we were back here at the boat ramp. Josh and I put the boat in the trailer. We're kind of overlooking the beautiful lake before we head to dinner. But I want to take a moment and explain to you guys kind of the ways that we caught our fish today. If Josh's phone wouldn't go off. <laughs> and uh, and uh, just kind of how we caught our fish today. Hopefully, we're going to catch the same type of fish tomorrow, the same quality. And a jig bite is definitely one of my favorites. And so kind of I'll get to that in a second. In the beginning, I got a few bites. And maybe we'll catch a few fish tomorrow on the scrounger head. Now, if you guys haven't fished this before, kind of get a little close up on it. It's basically like a... 
I can't even explain what type of plastic this is, like a rubbery thing that basically makes this a mixture of a spinnerbait, chatterbait, and a crankbait. Uh, with a little bit of a little bit of a shad imitation in there as well And so hopefully that gets us a few bites and hopefully a big one tomorrow But I think the majority of our pattern if these fish stay the same is going to be casting and flipping a finesse jig around Now I'm sure in current situations different types of jigs could work But the finesse jig this is the war eagle it works so well in so many situations Especially in the Coosa River where Josh was it invented for the Coosa? Is no, here? I don't know. It's just kind of everybody throws a finesse jig if they throw a jig. Yeah, so if they, like you said, anybody throws a jig around here, it's going to be a finesse jig. Uh, and so I was throwing it on the Luz Custom Speed Stick Light 7.3 Medium Heavy. I might switch to a longer rod and a heavy rod tomorrow just to make sure I get the hook set on them. I'm trying to work on my hook set. As you guys know, I'm not a perfect angler. I'm working on it as well. Uh, and this is definitely my favorite all-around reel for just bass fishing. It is the Luz Tournament MB Cast a Country Mile. Uh, absolutely love this thing. And I had it on 15-pound fluorocarbon. I think Josh might be switching to some 20 pound floor carbon <laughs> after that big one he lost but all this stuff will be down in the description for you guys to purchase for yourself now if you guys have enjoyed the sweet home alabama tour make sure you guys hit that subscribe button and we'll see you guys in the finale of i just said the name <clears throat> I'll, I'll read it out <clears throat> Now, hopefully you guys have been enjoying the Sweet Home Alabama tour. If you did, make sure you guys hit the like button below. Drop me a comment what type of stuff you want to see next. And stay tuned for the finale of the Sweet Home Alabama tour. See you guys.